Good afternoon and welcome to a very special Super Bowl edition of the Sports Club Perspective right here on IE Sports Radio. You're the right people for all that is sports. You gotta love it, right? You gotta love it. Simply irresistible. What am I talking about? Soda, baby! Oh yeah! Today we're kicking off a brand new series. Really, really, really excited. We are leaving, not leaving, but we are branching out from coffee. And we're going to be tasting all kinds of crap. It's going to be yummy. We got some root beer today we're really excited for. Going to have our pizza and snacks on the way in just a bit as we prepare for Super Bowl 58. As always, this is me, your boy Larry B. I'm joined by my beautiful wife, the lovely Cecilia. Good afternoon. Hi, everyone. Poor Cecilia. She's been fighting a cold. Yeah. Or a... What is it called? Sinus infection. Poor thing. She's had a rough week or so. Yeah. Not the, not her best week, but hey, she's a trooper. We didn't make it last week on Friday, so we're making up for it today. Really excited for it. Um, feeling better? Somewhat. She's hanging in there. She's a trooper. Like I said, she's awesome. So we're really trying to, uh, you know, really trying to make today's show as best as we can, but... We are ready to rock and roll. We have ourselves a game to be played in just a couple of hours. And are you excited for the new tasting series? Yeah. This is going to be fun. Mm-hmm. Route 66 sodas. Yeah, it's going to be different. I can't believe we're leaving coffee behind. Not for long. <laughs> it's going to be fun. These are going to be some different, different tastings here. But the world market, it's safe to say we have a problem. <laughs> they have an addiction. But it's okay. Delicious sodas we're hoping for. You saw them a couple weeks. We're going to get into the story of how, how Silly even found those. And plenty more today. And of course, George Lopez series. We're watching that right now. Good old Peacock. And we are definitely, like you said, going to be enjoying today's game. So... Without further ado, you are now tuned in live to the Sports Club Perspectives right here on iSports Radio. You are the for all. That is sports. Welcome, 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 ladies and gentlemen out there. Thank you all for tuning in on your busy Super Bowl Sunday. My goodness, Sunday, February 11th. I was already on the air earlier um, for three and out, and we had church earlier, and we're just doing all kinds of stuff. Uh, this morning, church online, and just getting uh, getting situated here. But um, I know, don't want to necessarily, uh, you know, go too much into this. But tough kind of a week. But hey, we're still here, mm-hmm. and we appreciate you guys for tuning in. So, yeah, my beautiful wife had a kind of a rough go with that sickness, but just glad you're doing better. Glad you're up and around now. Yeah, I'm not tied to the bed anymore. No, poor thing. It's Ugh, being sick sucks. Yeah, I wish we didn't have to get sick. Seriously, right? It's kind of a crappy deal, but it happens. I mean, teach your life, right? Mm-hmm. It's just kind of how it goes, so I'm happy that we are at least, you know, uh, doing our thing. I'm hoping I feel it a little bit. Hopefully I don't get sick. Ugh, really hoping I don't get sick. Yeah, that would suck. <laughs> but I'm just really glad that you know we're here, we're able to do our show today, and yeah, we're keeping it going. So, alrighty. First things first, we got a brand new tasting today. This is gonna be exciting. I mean, I'm <laughs> I am really excited for this. So, do you want to tell everybody how you fell upon these sodas at World Market? I mean, I was being my usual self, just looking around, <clears throat> and came across uh, came across them, and thought that was a cool box, and I was reading it, and I was saying, oh, we gotta get it one day, and that one day finally came, and yesterday we went to go get them. Yeah, it's, they're really cool, like, when she first showed me these, she was like, look what I found, I was like, oh, they're cool, I mean, I'm over there in my own little world, too, kind of just looking at stuff and finding all the candies. Whoops. <laughs> um, and all the sweet stuff. Um, we are recently really enjoying fluff. Mm-hmm. Anybody out there who's never tried fluff, you should try fluff. It's freaking melted marshmallows in a jar. Mm-hmm. And you put it on toast. 
and it's amazing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I'm really, really, really loving that stuff. Um, but yeah, so Cecilia so found that, and it was like these sodas, and we we're like, oh, sweet. So we're gonna tell you a little bit about these sodas. We got the big old case right here, and I love this little little thing they got here on the side too. They got a little write up all about the company, I think, and get some really cool stuff here. So okay, so Route sixty six sodas. So really fast, if you want to check out the soda we're going to drink today, it's actually Cecilia's all-time favorite soda, root beer. Oh, this is not. <laughs> yeah, Cecilia is not a root beer fan, but she decided let's get it out of the way first. Just yeah. Try root beer. Mm-hmm. I, I was like, we could do it later, but she's like, no, I want the root beer. Yeah, get it out of the way. <laughs> hey, watch it be really good and you like it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I I don't like hate it. Like, I'll drink it, obviously, but it's not my favorite go to soda that I would pick. <laughs> well, it's not bad, but I get you. I know what you mean. I I'm not the biggest fan of root beer either, but root beer is not bad. Mm-mm. It's not. It's not bad. It's really not. But looking forward to uh, trying this one out today. Really cool. Um, oh, look at all. How cool! Look at all these. All these awesome comments in the chat. Yeah, thank you, everyone. I am feeling a little bit better, so that's good. Yeah, poor Cecilia. She's just... It's been a rough go. Let's see. What's Jen B say up there? She's put good afternoon and feel better, Cecilia. Oh, who else wrote up there? Taryn? I see Taryn. I see Ralph Kalise. Yeah. Oh, thank you, guys. We appreciate you. Yeah, this is... This is like she's, she's been laid up, but thankfully she's gotten a little better, so... Yeah. Today's a better day. Yeah, so thankfully everything's good. So we're getting yeah, better. It sucks, because when I get sick, man, it puts me down man. for like a good week. And then, but yeah, I have a horrible immune system. <laughs> Poor thing. I need to take vitamins like I used to. Yeah, it's rough. Sicknesses suck. Like they, ugh, it's gross. Like it's just a, I don't know. And then so being bad. a teacher too doesn't help. <laughs> Yeah, I mean it's 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 like a given, right? Right? Like it's like asking water not to be wet, or athletes not to get injured, mm-hmm. or cars not to depreciate and get banged up as you drive them. I mean, this is something you can't prevent. Yeah, can't prevent it. So, uh, really, really, really excited though for uh, you know being able to get healthy mm-hmm. and not have to you know be stuck at home and everything. So I'm just hoping I don't get it, but. It should be good though. We should be mm-hmm. fine and really, really excited for for uh, our show here today. So let's get into these here. Uh, Taryn, <laughs> Taryn says here in the chat room. I used to like root beer, but I'm but I what is it? Outgrew but, it. But then I outgrew it. <laughs> Can you outgrow a soda? Yeah. Did you ever like root beer? Actually, I did when I was younger. Maybe you that's did. why it wasn't still my favorite go-to, but. I would drink it, yeah, like like nothing, but maybe it's something I outgrew too. I mean, supposedly your taste buds change every seven years, so. Yeah, which is crazy. Okay, I got to say this, though, before we go any further. Cecilia likes pepperoncinis, you guys. Oh, yeah. Cecilia, <laughs> like, I mean, I'm a pepperoncini head. Like, I I have love pepperoncinis. I mean, I'm freaking, you know, half Sicilian here, so I love me some pepperoncinis. I always have. But Cecilia, I never thought would be into pepperoncinis. And now she's enjoying them on her sandwiches. Mm-hmm. Okay. Or with them. So good, isn't it? Yep. They're so good. Oh, there's our little... <laughs> I'm on our social media right now, and well, there you go. It'll be like our little Chuck Berry get your kicks on Route 66 deal there. Did anybody hear it? If you haven't, go to her Instagram. Go check it out. It's pretty cool in our story. But anyway, so Route 66, the Great American Road Trip. Okay, if you head on over to social media, of course, at T-S-C-P, uh, taste, or, sorry, tastings, that's our hashtag, T-S-C-P, tastings. However, if you go on over to our uh, actual social media, at T-S-C-P underscore I-A-S-R, on X, also on Instagram, and our brand new Facebook page. Hey, we got a Facebook page. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> head on over to our Facebook page as well, at the Sports Club Perspectives, and you will see... Of course, we just posted up the one we're going to be tasting today, which is Bedford's Root Beer. So, let's take a quick look here. Oh, look at that. I'm on social media now. You can hear it. (laughs) So, okay. So, in the Great American Road Trip, 
It says here, Route 66 was commissioned in November of 1926 and was roughly 2,448 miles long. It crossed eight states and three time zones, including Illinois, Missouri, Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, and California. The last original Route 66 road, oh, road sign was taken down in Chicago on January 17th, 1977. And the last sketch of the road disappeared from the quote-unquote official maps in 1985. Route 66 is also known as the quote-unquote mother, the mother road, and quote-unquote the main street of America. 85% of the original road is still drivable today. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. So, it also says here that, uh, it says doghouse is a little picture here, and it says here, featured prominently on several episodes of TV's Breaking Bad, the doghouse was named the best hot dog restaurant in the New, in New Mexico by the website people.com in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Crazy, yeah. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Okay, so, here we are. We have ourselves uh, this good-looking soda here. All these really cool little things here you see on the <laughs> on the side. It's really, really, really neat. But I tried really hard to look at where these sodas were like located, where they're actually from. It doesn't say anything. It just says like, where they're actually from, I guess, where they're made in uh, Washington State, which is nowhere near Route 66. But um, regardless, though, I don't know. I don't even care. These sodas are really cool. They're really decorative. Mm-hmm. You gotta, you gotta show love for the for the bottles, right? Yeah. Like the artwork is really neat. So I'm they do here. remind you of like an old school, um, like what year would you say? Like I don't know. I would say eighties, kind of in a way. Yeah, even style fifties. Like I was or even that fifties. Re- reading that this one, Team Lime, we're looking at them last night. This was actually Pepsi's answer to Seven Up. Mm-hmm. Which is really cool, you know? So there's some cool history in here. We're going to look at some of the history of these here today. But, of course, without further ado, we have our first sodas out. And ah, we are ready to go. So, I doubt these are twist off. Probably going to need my... Oh, oh, they are twist offs! Well, there's mine. <laughs> okay, so you want this one? It doesn't matter. The twisty twist. So there we go. Twist off lid. And we are going to try, it is up on our social media at right now, once again, that is at T-S-C-P underscore I-E-S-R. Boom. Ooh, they are warm. Sorry, I know I should have put these in the fridge. That's my fault. Mm-hmm. So he's not happy with me. But. Yeah, who likes a warm soda? Sorry. Well, the lids are off. And let's take our first swig of Bedford's, Bedford's root beer. All right, here we go. Mm. Oh, that's a smooth root beer. This one's not bad. Very smooth. Mm-hmm. They're twist-off caps. I like that. And this says here, Northwest Soda Works. Established in 84. So, you know, I'm guessing 1984. Bedford's. This is Port Angeles, Washington. Root beer. Sweetened with pure sugar cane. It's a 12 fluid ounce bottle. And, yeah, Bedford's root beer on the back. And that's pretty much it. Just Orca Beverage Incorporated, of course. We've been tagging them from Milkeet, I think, uh, Milkiletto. Or, how do you say that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know where you're reading it. Milkiltio, oh, uh, Washington. Back. So, yeah, this is actually a very good... Mm-hmm. Mm. This is a good root beer. This is a very... You know, it's not like an overpowering kind of root beer. Like, okay, I'm sure you remember some of the OGs, right? A and W. Yeah, that's the only one I can really remember. Well, don't forget, Barks has bite. You remember Barks? Mm-mm. Oh, we gotta give Cecilia a lesson now. No. Barks, Barks, Barks has bites. If you guys remember those, that was popular when we were kids in the '90s. But uh, Barks, so Barks root beer. I think it was with a Q, if I'm not mistaken. It was. It was with a Q. But it was like a silver box, if anybody remembers Barks. Okay, now I remember it. it. Yeah, and that was their thing. It was established in, dang, 1898. That's crazy. Barks has bite. Like, yeah, it was. this was a big deal. And you know what? That one looks closer to a beer. 
It does, huh? It looks like like an actual beer. Mm-hmm. Like a can, like it's all silvery and everything. But Barks, I really liked Barks. I did. It was it was good. But I just felt like Barks, like it, they weren't kidding. It really did have bite. Like it was a stronger root beer. I feel like I taste cinnamon in there. But that hmm. could be me. I don't know. That could be... We should look at what root beer is. My taste buds are not really the same right now. Poor or thing. my smell, so... Poor thing. <laughs> well, I'll tell you. Um, I mean, remember that old that old theory, too, of... Um, <laughs> the, uh, the, the soda theory. Mm. Oh, man. Of what dark pepper really is. Oh, there yeah. There was that pharmacist, I think, like in the 18... 18- 80s or 90s who like to mix sodas together or something like that. And mm-hmm. He mixed together cola and root beer and dog pepper. That was the, the, the what do they call that? The, uh, I don't know if it's a myth or not, but that's the legend, I guess, of how dog pepper came along. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, this is a very smooth soda. Um, if you have a world market near you, trust me, you guys are just, just go. Mm-hmm. Just go. It's such a cool place. We really enjoy these. It really is, yeah. Mm. You find the rarest things there that you would never find in a regular store. Mm-hmm. I mean, there are some things, but it's like, it's all good. But this one also, as as opposed to mug, remember mug root beer? Yes. Yeah, mug root beer. Um, I didn't realize there was like three types. I thought there was only two. Yeah, well, I think mug root beer turned into... I don't know where we gotta look at the history of some of this stuff, but but yeah, mug of course. I remember in the late '90s scene, like the the commercials. Remember if you remember seeing one of those iconic commercials, it was the Ohio players. People all over the world join hands. No, remember that? Mm-mm. Join the love train, love train. Remember that? Did I remember seeing the video? Oh, it was the oh, the love train, and it was like mug, and people were like all over the world, root beer. You know what I mean? Like, whatever, whatever. Like, yeah, but Mug, it was a little dog. <laughs> mm-hmm. But looking here at the pictures online, yeah, it says no caffeine, so interesting. A root no, beer. there's no caffeine in root beer. Interesting, did not know that. <laughs> but pretty cool here, though, you know? So you see some of the most famous root beers. You know, I've never in my life heard of this one, though. Like I said, Bedford's. It's actually very tasty. I like the smooth taste it. Well, tasteness. The smooth taste. And overall, I just felt like... Oh yeah, this is this is a good soda. I actually like this a lot. Are you are you not a fan of it because it's root beer? Yeah, I like it, but I wouldn't choose this on a daily or whatever to drink it. Um, oh, maybe that was it. Yeah, Terrence, I remember that commercial for Coors. I think it was Coors. Mm-hmm. That was a love train. But okay, so mug. I'm sorry. Well, anyway, mug group. We're, I think commercials are going to be the topic of our show today. Anyway, of course. So, but yeah, once again, guys. If you have a world market near you, or if you ever see Bedford's, it's, of course, on our social media at TSCP, underscore IESR, on X and on Instagram, also at The Sports Couple Perspectives, on Facebook. If you ever see it, go give it a try. It's very tasty. Of course, you can just put that picture up there from the internet. Uh, I think from Amazon up there, so <laughs> thanks, for letting borrow. thanks for letting us borrow it, guys. But, uh, yeah, it's a very, very, very good root beer. I like this a lot. I don't feel like it's very overpowering. Um, 180 calories. Mm. Interesting. 44 grams of sugar, as any soda would have, right? 40 grams. Or four, Is it 40 grams? Mm-hmm. That's the total carb you're looking That's at. That's sodium. Or mm. sodium. Mm. This is a good, it's a good soda. I really enjoy Oh, yeah, it. you're right. 44 grams of sugar. For a root beer, and for being, um, you know, just a typical soda, I have like a seven. It's a root beer. I'm not the biggest fan of root beers, but I appreciate. I can give it like an eight, actually. I can give it. It's a. It's a. It's a very good. This is probably the best root beer I think I've had, because if you're not a root beer fan, like I said, like Barks, Barks. I mean, Barks definitely has. Look at Gen B in the chat. Barks definitely has bite. I've never liked Mug. A and W has always been my fave, only from a glass bottle. It's the way to go, right? Yeah, glass. <clears throat> it just makes the drink taste better for some reason mm-hmm. than like in a can or in a plastic bottle. I wonder why that is, but I know even beers, like anything in a in a, what 
anything in a, in a uh, bottle, man. I just feel like it's better. It's mm -hmm. definitely better. So, anyway, guys. So, there you have it. Our TSCP tastings for the week. Bedford's Root Beer from Orca Beverages. Go ahead and give them a follow at Orca underscore beverages on Instagram. Also on Facebook. We found them on Facebook. Orca Beverages, O R C A Beverages. Very, very, very good. I, I think this is a pretty good root beer, and I'm very happy that we bought this. Yeah, me too, especially since we get to taste all the other ones. <laughs> and it's cool, too, because I thought it was only going to be like one bottle, so I thought Larry and I were going to have to share it, but it comes with two of mm -hmm. each kind. So, what, in total, is there's, I don't know, five? Yeah, no, so well, ten. not five, ten. Mm -hmm. So we both get our own bottle, so that's pretty cool. Very, very good. Um, I, I like the fact, too, that it's only 16 bucks. <laughs> yeah, which is not bad. And the cool thing is, too, you know, since we've been, like, you know, low-key addicted to the world market for the last year <laughs> or so, we have signed up for the rewards and everything, and Cecilia's over here just getting the rewards over here on her, her email, so mm -hmm. we're loving it. She gets, like, we got $5 off this, didn't we? No. It was off of, I don't know what it was, something else, because it didn't pertain to food or... That's right. ...or drinks or anything. But you gotta love it. <laughs> this is a really, really cool... Yeah, Northwest Soda Works. Uh, once again, give them a follow here. That's, that's the soda with the bottles is here. But give them a follow also on Facebook. It's Orca Beverage Soda Works. So we already gave them a like. They are awesome. And let's see what else... And the cool part is, too, the guy was telling us at the register when we were buying this, there's even more. Like, there's different boxes with different sodas. Yeah. So we'll have to keep an eye out for those and then continue this probably for a good minute. If we can find them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a very good soda. I like it. Not too overpowering. And definitely, uh, this is a really good root beer. Yeah. What would you give it? A six. The six. <laughs> the the non-root beer fan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, looking at the remaining bottles here. Team. Team Lime. We have the... Americana Huckleberry in our box. We also have the Godoy Berry Cream. Goody. Not Godoy. Oh, Goody. Oh. I'm sorry. I thought that was Godoy. Oops. I thought there was an extra O in there. Goody. And the Triple Cola. Drink it for vim and vigor. So, <laughs> this is cool. Um, Which one of these? We got four more to go. Of course, we have to, we're going to taste another one this coming Friday for our mm -hmm. show. Which one of those are you most excited to taste? Um, I think the cola. <laughs> so I think we'll save that one for last. I'm looking for the goody, the berry cream. It's blue. I love the blue. The berry cream seems interesting, too. It's blue. It looks good. I love blue. It's delicious. And our kitty blue is right here. Mm -hmm. And she's ex examining the box. <laughs> That's because she wants to get in the box. <laughs> she's, trying to, she's trying to get a soda. She wants a soda. I think it's funny. We have all these, like, toys for her and <laughs> this, like, cat house thing. But every time we bring a box home, she'd rather that uh, prefer that over the stuff that she has. Gotta love animals. Gotta love animals. I feel like it's like babies with toys. <laughs> well, there it is, you guys. There is our quick and dirty... Oh, well, not quick, actually. That was 24 minutes. Our apologies. That was our segment there. On some root beer, Bedford's root beer, once again, delicious. Give it a try. Head on over to World Market, your local World Market. If you don't have one, we'll tell them they need one in your city. Just kidding. But <laughs> we're taking this on a short break. When we get back, we are jumping right on in. So many things to get into today. Our main topic, Super Bowl commercials. Get ready to bring out your favorite ones. Of course, talk about the cost of current Super Bowl commercials. Oh, my gosh. We just watched a video earlier from WatchMojo.com or from uh, WatchMojo on YouTube. And... We are going to be talking about the series we've been watching, of course, George Lopez. Also, Cecilia just finished one that she was watching, and I have no idea what it even was, but she said she didn't like it. Just kidding. I don't know. What was it? It was The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. What is that? She's a comedic. A comedic. Comedic. How do you say it? Comic. Comic. Yeah. There you go. I don't know what I'm saying. Well... 
We got all that good stuff. And, of course, we're talking a little bit about today's Super Bowl, right? I mean, come on. It's a Super Bowl edition, duh. Here on IE Sports Radio, we hope you're excited. Let's do the dang thing, y'all. Here it goes. You are now tuned in live to the Super Bowl 58 edition of the Sports Go Perspectives right here on IE Sports Radio. New Drive for All. That is sports. We'll be right back after this. Hey yo, what's up? This your man Bishop, the voice of This Is KC Sports, the show where we go over the Chiefs, the Royals, KC Current, Sporting KC, MU, and oh yeah, if we got time, we'll even throw in some of that KU stuff from our people on the 913 side. Come hang out with us every Sunday, 2 p.m. Central Standard Time on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. What's happening, sports fans? Are you a fan of Southern California sports? Are you looking for a show hotter than a hot summer day in California? Then look no further than the SoCal Supreme Sports Show, where I talk about all things Southern California sports. That's right, all sports teams from Southern California. From the hard-hitting tackles of the NFL, to the killer crossovers and big three-pointers of the NBA and WNBA, to the grand slams of the MLB, to the bone-chilling goals of the NHL, and to the booming kicks of the MLS, the SoCal Supreme Sports Show has it all for you. Oh, and let us not forget about the college sports as well. So join me, Taryn Rodriguez, every week here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Are you a fan of Buffalo sports? Are you thinking of changing loyalties and becoming a Buffalo sports fan? Do you even know where Buffalo is on the map? Did you know Canada is closer to Buffalo than New York City? Welcome to the Buffalo Huddle every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and 4 p.m. Pacific Coast Time on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. I'm your host, Patty Bax. This is a podcast designed for you, the passionate sports fan. I know you love your sports. Who doesn't? I cover Buffalo sports and so much more by bringing in the human elements. I call it Buffalo sports with a twist. Join me as we take a journey into the world of Buffalo sports. I guarantee you'll fall in love with Buffalo just like I did. Each week, we start with an inspiration, question of the day, a Buffalo fun fact, and a weekly challenge to you, the listener. Come huddle up with me every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and 4 p.m. Pacific Coast Time for the Buffalo Huddle with Patty Bax on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. As we say in Buffalo, Go Bills! Welcome back. You are listening to Sports Good Perspectives right here on IE Sports Radio. We can go with the right people for all that is sports. As always, we have one there. Coming to you live here with my beautiful wife, the lovely Cecilia, who is just getting over her little sickness, but she's, once again, just chugging along and, I mean, hey, definitely appreciate you filling up to doing, doing the show today. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> well, here we go, you guys, once again. Bedford's root beer, absolutely delicious. So you had to go put it on ice. Mm-hmm. How is it? It's a little bit better, but still not my favorite. Is it still a six? Yes. <laughs> cool, didn't bump it up a little bit? Mm-mm. Okay, well, that's uh, 
There you go. Well, I'm going to stick with an eight. I think it's pretty dang good. But once again, we will continue on with our journey in sodas <laughs> for the tastings. So anyway, you guys, with that said, now we are headed on over to our next segment for the day. And that, of course, is the shows we've been watching. So what have we been watching? Uh, well, of course, George Lopez is awesome. The original. Mm-hmm. I mean, I hope no one gets mad at me when I say I didn't like the new one. It's not supposed to compare. I guess, I don't know, though. I guess didn't There's it. no relation to the two. I know, but I guess it wasn't as funny as the old one. All right, you're just biased. I'm sorry. <laughs> George Lopez is still the man. Mm-hmm. Big Raider fan. Hilarious comic. Mm-hmm. But, um, but yeah, just saying, you know, just saying, eh. I wasn't too fond of that old. But the old one, when we were in high school, crazy. That thing is crazy, right? It's 2002 to 07. Hmm. Those are those are the years we were in high school. I didn't expect it to be, a, like, during that time. I thought I was a little bit older. Crazy, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, what I love about the series right now, we're currently, what, in season, I think, five out of six? We're, we're moving pretty quick through it. Yeah, they're short, too, so. Um, yeah, I think we are on season five, so we're almost done with it. I think it's cool because, of course, I mean, I've seen almost, I've seen every single one of these, of course. So you've seen a large amount of these, too, growing up and in high school. And it's funny because looking back at it now, too, I mean, it's cool. You know, you look at it, and it's like the typical, you know, and there's no race or anything here. Like, But I'm just saying, when it comes down to, like, that perspective, it's pretty cool seeing, you know, that Latino, typical middle-class Latino family just making it with the struggles and whatever, whatever. I mean, pretty cool seeing that, right? Yeah. You know, and I was very happy... Uh, watching that as a, as a teenager, because I was like, oh, this is cool. This is very similar to what I'm going through right now, or this is, or this is. You know, once again, it's not like you can't relate to another race or anything like that, but once again, it was pretty cool seeing Chicanos on TV, uh, you know, with a pretty cool, and once again, I mean, my gosh, I've watched the rainbow of different types of things. I mean, both of us have uh, different types of sitcoms and everything, but this one, it hits a little bit closer to home, you mm-hmm. know, because we have that, you know, this is really cool seeing that, um, I don't know, because the, thing, the things that are in there is pretty funny. Yeah. And the, I mean, okay, so I've expressed to you before, the grandma is my favorite character. <laughs> she's hilarious. Come on. Yeah, you know? she can be funny, but she's mean. Yeah, that's why. Because it's funny. Yeah, because you're a mean person. I'm not that mean. <laughs> should, I'm just kidding. You should be her biggest fan then, meanie. How am I, oh, how yeah. would I be her biggest fan? <laughs> okay, so overall... It's kind of funny because Cecilia, now that we've been watching this a couple of, like we've watched it over the last couple of weeks, Cecilia's had some opinions about the characters that are so much different. And I wanted to point that out. That was pretty cool. I did. I don't remember. Well, okay. Now, just, just based off of what you, like for instance, George Lopez. I see him the same as I saw him back when we were in high school. I see him as the, he's a hardworking dad doing mm-hmm. everything he possibly can. He built himself up from the factory, from the line. He's, he's very proud of that, and he's busting his ass to, to feed his family, to make them happy, to do all things possibly can. You know, and I still see him as that same exact guy, no different, in high school mm-hmm. from now. Do you see yours Lopez any different than you did back then? No. Okay. So, okay. Now his wife, Angie Lopez. Kind of funny. I did remember, of course, you know... Uh, I remember seeing, seeing this in high school once again and seeing how they, you know, react, how they acted with one another. And it's kind of funny because a lot of that was kind, not ever 100%, but I do see some relation to my parents. Very, very slightly. Because, don't get me wrong, my mom was hardcore, okay? She was super duper hardcore. But my dad always wanted to be extremely tough, which was good for me. Um... My mom definitely did pick up the nurturing part, as, as a you know typical woman would, um, which is good, a good thing, you know, but, you know, she's being mama bear to her kids. But, um, I don't know, I kind of saw, like, when it came to that, I just kind of felt like I still see the mom the same exact way that I did, you know, the kind of dorky, she was very dorky, but the nurturing mom, and mm-hmm. I, I see the parents, both of them, exactly how I did back then. Do you see any difference from back then to now that we watch it? No. Okay. Now it's time for the kids. <laughs> and this is where I think I've changed up the most. Okay. So you have the two kids. The older one, the girl, Carmen, 
and the son, Max. In high school, it was kind of funny because, like, like with, 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 with the girl, of course, it's kind of funny because, you know, you'd see a lot of that in high school. Mm-hmm. And the teasing, the bullying sometimes, the fights, the whatever. And then you can even relate with the younger one, with the boy, a little bit younger, because I can just think back a couple of years from that and be like, oh, yeah, that happened too. So I think they completely nailed it with the kids. Yeah. Now, I used to think, though, that, kind of funny how we grow, you know, uh, maybe they're being a little too hard on their daughter. Maybe she was, you know, maybe, maybe they're being a little too tough on her at certain times, or at least George Lopez was. And with, you know, their son, you know, there was some favoritism in a sense, because he was easier, because we've seen those episodes, of course, easier to deal with when he was younger and he's a boy. But the same exact time, you know, just the easiness as well, I felt like, I just felt like, um, I don't know, I felt like maybe just a little bit. But how funny is this? I was a teenager, and I was like, eh, maybe they are just a little too tough. Remind me of my parents, but eh, it's no big deal. Nothing crazy there. But now, all these years later, I'm watching it, and I'm like, man, those kids are brats, man. Mm-hmm. Like, oh my gosh. And it's funny, right? All these years later, I'm like, okay, at first I was kind of like low-key siding with the kids, but now I'm like, hell no, man, parents. <laughs> Shoot, if I did half the things that, like, Carmen did, at least, since, you know, her and I are both girls and whatnot, I would have been, I don't know, I would have been beat. <laughs> not literally don't take that literally I but <laughs> yes i would have gotten like a spanking more like or husband. like a slap in the mm-hmm. face for like talking back <laughs> shoot and that taught me for sure to have respect for elders and adults and whatnot but right that yeah they got away with a lot <laughs> on this show and it seems like they don't believe in at least some kind of punishment yeah. even grounding though we, I never got grounded. Other than, like, I don't know. Yeah, I guess, in a way. Where it'd be, like, no TV or something like that. But yeah. even then, I feel like that was rare for me. Um, it would good. just be more of a a spank. Or, you know, <laughs> slap in the face. <laughs> and then... Um, I didn't get those all the time either, though. Slap in the face. But... Mainly spankings. But... <laughs> <laughs> I'm making myself sound like I was a horrible kid. I wasn't... Yeah. I was probably the least of my siblings <laughs> to get the least of the spanking, so. Um, <laughs> sorry, excuse me. Um, but, yeah, it seemed like, yeah, they just believed in grounding, but I feel like grounding really doesn't do anything. I kind of feel like to fit the to fit the demographic on TV, to, like, make it seem not seem like Latinos are abusive or anything like that, I, I really do. Because if you listen to his comics, like his stand-up, he tells you how it really is. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> man, I get my ass kicked. <laughs> I get beat like I stole something, man. But you know what? Like you said, all these years later, you know, not that I'm a, I condone child abuse or anything, and not that my parents abused me, but I'm just telling you, when I needed my ass kicked, I got my ass kicked. Mm-hmm. And boy, did I learn. And now, look, I have two master's degrees <laughs> and all these good things going for me. I'm just saying, hey, look. And it's not that I said that a lot very often, but when I did... I was put back very fast. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think, you know, but once again, you know, it made me better. And um, I just kind of felt like, you know, have, the, have this be a little more realistic, kind of like a, oh, okay, for instance, kind of like how we watch Bel Air. Mm-hmm. You know, you get the funny, if there was a real George Lopez, kind mm-hmm. of, it's like, like the drama version, oh yeah, you'd see a lot of different stuff, I'm pretty sure. That'd be interesting if they were to do a serious... George Lopez, oh my gosh. Like Bel Air, right? Mm-hmm. From, from Fresh Prince, like, yeah. Like, I'd love to see that. Yeah. yeah. That'd be really cool. But, like I said, I think we've all taken our beatings as kids and everything like that. But at the end of the day, like I said, you know, it was only for our own good. And uh, But, but you know, that's something that I see, though. I, I just think it's hilarious how when I was a kid, um, you know, when I was a kid, I was like, low-key kind of like, no, man, the kids. And now I'm like, oh, hell no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Isn't that funny? I mean, mm-hmm. You know, so, okay. So, Benny Lopez. Mm-hmm. Isn't she great? She's funny. She's so freaking mean. Mm-hmm. It's... She knows how to manipulate well. <laughs> oh, man, that lady is a piece of work. I've never seen her on anything ever. I don't think I have either. But... I think this was, like, her 
big time role, and that was it, unfortunately. But man, she played it well. Mm. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, that lady played it real well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the the love hate relationship between her and George is great. Yeah, <laughs> it's very it's playful at times, but it's so serious at other times. It's pretty mm-hmm. funny, but. So, you know, we've gotten through all, like, a lot of it, you know. I mean, George Lopez, you know, starts off as, you know, being the first day on the, ma- on the job as a manager, moving up. He goes through the whole racial deal of, um, you know, moving up from the line and being on the line and then being tried to pulled over, trying to be pulled over by another company because of the color of his skin. He's like a token. He go- I mean, we've seen that. We've seen the mom go through countless episodes of just back. Crazy stuff. I mean, currently we've watched the episode where her house burned, her car burned. Mm-hmm. She has to live with them now. The daughter and the son get into all kinds of trouble. And George thinks the answer is moving to somewhere else when the problems there are just as bad. Uh, his dad, he finds his father, comes back into the picture. Um, wouldn't you know it? He has kidney disease and he asks him for a kidney and he's about to do it. But before he does it, he dies. I mean, he finds his long lost brother. He finds his long lost sister. It's actually his actual sister, not his half half sibling like the other one Lou Diamond Phillips plays the half brother mm-hmm. but the other lady is the like her you know the actual uh full-blooded sister that the mom gave away I mean just wow right I mean mm-hmm. there's a lot of stories tied you know um the, the the wife Angie Lopez her dad and her mom they go through a divorce and, and she cheated and all the all these different things the dad sticks around the you know, of course, the wife is out of the picture now. The George is trying to impress her, his father-in-law, uh, you know, trying to do things, trying to, you know, with the money he's making. He's, his his, 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 um, his uh, father-in-law is a rich doctor, so he does all these things for the kids, for the family. George is always trying to compete some way. I mean, because all these crazy stories that are, like, attached into one. I, I think they did a very good job. Uh, Sandra Bullock, right? She was a big part of the production of this. She was an executive producer. I think they did a great job. Whoever like wrote this, mm-hmm. I think they did a really, really good job of getting like the typical. And once again, that's not even just Latino. You know, what I mean, of course, yes, this focuses on a Latino family, but man, this is the crap you see every day. Just, just being a person in your family, all the twists and turns and everything. I mean, I think they got it pretty good. Yeah, they did a really good job, and it's always going to be a good show. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So. Recently, we're just where the mom got her own apartment. And, oh, okay, we got to do one more. Ernie Cardenas. <laughs> what? <laughs> you feel bad for him, don't you? Mm-hmm. This poor guy. <laughs> He's like that dorky, hopeless romantic kind of guy. Oh, this poor thing. I just, I just don't understand how. I feel bad for those out there who are really like that. It's like, there's hope. Just keep fighting it. Like, what? You didn't have any dorky friends in high school or anything? No. no. Okay. <laughs> I'm just saying, um, it was just kind of like, oh my gosh. Just seeing him, he was the comic relief of so many episodes. Of, mm-hmm. That poor guy. <laughs> he was the punchline, but he played it well. So, anyway, it's like, George Lopez, fun show. Uh, if you've never seen it, go watch it. It's on Peacock. We really enjoy it. And, of course, if you know, you just want to take a glimpse at it. It's not bad or anything. But, anyway. So, okay. We each just watched a different series by ourselves. Mm-hmm. And um, me, of course, watching Twisted Metal. I thought that was freaking awesome. Oh, and you finished it? Yeah. It was only 10 episodes. They're making a new one, though. Oh. A new season. So, okay. So, what was yours called again? And explain what it was. The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. It's just a girl... Who gets married super young, probably like in her early 20s, maybe even late teens. And <clears throat> she marries her husband out of college. They met in college, so yeah, they get married afterwards. They have two kids. Unfortunately, he ends up cheating. They get divorced. And then uh, just on a random night that her husband leaves her, she goes to a... I don't know if it's a coffee shop or something like that, like a uh, a nighttime, because I remember one person was, like, asking for alcohol or whatever, and they're like, we don't serve alcohol or whatever. So, anyway, I think they, <laughs> which is kind of weird, but it's a nightclub, though, still, in a way, <clears throat> and people go there to perform whatever that they have to f- perform, either poetry or singing or, um, you know, if you play an instrument or whatever, and so on and so forth. And so she goes on that stage 
just out of randomness, out of anger. And I guess it was her way of expressing herself. And she becomes a comedic and falls in love with it. And <laughs> yeah, and the rest is history. And um, it, I liked the first, like, one through three seasons. And then four and five just... I don't know, took a different turn or something. Like, it felt like it was rushed. Like, they were like, okay, we need to end the series, so let's just try to figure out a way to end it and then just end it. So, I don't know. Four and five kind of was, like, a disappointment to me because they would, like, they never did it through the first three where they would, uh, like, flash to the future or to the present, I should say, and then back to the past. So that was just kind of weird and kind of like confusing a little bit. But yeah, and and it seems like she made it. Like she became a true comedic. For some reason, she struggled through. And this is supposed to take place like the 50s or 60s or so. So, of course, women getting that respect that we still want in a way um, was hard for her to earn that respect. And so, of course, she had a harder time becoming a comic and everything like that but I mean she ended off you know ended well off and everything like that so it seemed like she got to do what she was made to do but it, yeah the ending was just kind of like really like it was kind of sad like you see this really strong woman trying to you know fulfill every part of her life being a mom being you know a work a uh, well worker and then, you know, trying to fulfill her dreams of being, you know, a comic and everything like that. And then being a daughter as well, because her parents were part of that, or her life too. And just everything. I don't know. But, I mean, I still liked it. How did it end? What happened? <laughs> it just sad. Um, ended with her, like, being an older woman. It's supposed to, I think... Oh, the year the year it ended is two thousand five. Oh wow! Okay, that's pretty recent. So I don't know how old that would have made her, because I don't know what year she was born though. But anyway, mm-hmm. yeah, she, they made her look really old though, obviously. And um, like I said, she ended up big. I'm assuming because she had lived in a basically in a mansion. It it seemed like cause they almost showed her whole home. And then, yeah, and then that was it, really. And that's how it ended. So it ended with her being, like, really well off, but just, like, alone and sad? Not alone, but, yeah. I don't know. I think I would have to rewatch the ending again, but, yeah, I don't know. That's weird. Four and five were just a horrible season. They could have ended it better, in my opinion. <laughs> Dang, 2005. From the 60s? Mm-hmm. She was in her 30s. Gee, she's old. Oh, my gosh. We're talking the 60s to the 70s. She was 40-ish. Mm-hmm. 80s, she was in her 50s. 90s, she's in her 60s. Dang. So she's in her 70s in the 2000s. Mm. So well, That's not too bad. Right now, she'd be in her 90s. <laughs> that's Dang. crazy to think. Yeah, so if she was in her 30s in the 60s, she was more than likely born in the 30s. Mm. So, like, wow, it's kind of crazy. She's, like, close to what our grandparents would have Word. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. Well, interesting. Yeah, that's that's different. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you didn't did really care for it though. Not that not the last two seasons. Like if they were going to finish, they probably should have just finished with season three because she was better off that way. But then again, you would want to know if she, you know, became um, a comic or not. <laughs> interesting. Well. Yeah, um, for Twisted Metal, it was awesome. It's just chaos. <laughs> Samoa Joe, the wrestler, of course, but he's sweet too. It's just chaos, chaos, chaos. The guy from the from the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, he was the the main character, and really cool. They called him Milkman. They ran across the country. I guess after the world ended and all these really crazy, chaotic, post apocalyptic crap. And I love it. I guess finished the first season. Hopefully, the next one's coming out this year. I think it is. Well, they actually have the Twisted Metal tournament, like the video games, where they freaking go at it and bully each other's cars up and crap. And I love it. It's chaos. It's just my world. Kind of cool. Fun stuff. <laughs> Sweet Tooth is awesome. I mean, just, just, just what a great... I love him because he's so, like... He's funny. He's actually funny. He's not like this... He's evil. 
but he's not like this like horribly evil person. He's like hilariously funny, but evil. <laughs> I don't know. Like it's pretty cool. I like. I like. It, it, this is Twisted Metal as I remember it as a kid playing it on PlayStation. So. Um, oh, that's yeah. right. It was a game, huh? It was a game, and they turned it into a show now. Mm-hmm. There was like four or five games all the way to like PS2, I think. But I think PlayStation Three was the last game, the last game they released, and it ended. And here we are now, already at PS5. So. Maybe PS4, I don't know, but anyway. But anyway, um, really cool stuff, so cool series and all that fun stuff there. So Anyway, so we've gotten through our tasting. We have gotten through the shows we are watching. We can briefly touch on our sports. Remember Cliff Kingsbury, the guy that I told you about, was going to be the offense coordinator for the Raiders? We picked him up recently. Oh, uh, yeah. He resigned. He pulled out of the deal. Really? He doesn't want to be a Raider after all. Wow. Huh. <laughs> That's his loss. Yeah, right. Okay, that's just different, you know. Um, just kind of a blah deal there. Really cool, you know, as we're getting closer. Next, actually, my gosh, next Sunday, in a few hours, we're headed to San Diego to go watch Chicago. Mm-hmm. This is pretty cool, you know. Uh, we have coming up, of course, uh, in a few weeks, Devils at Ducks for the Teacher Appreciation Day. Oh, yeah. That's going to be hectic. We're up to our show earlier in the week. We're mm-hmm. going to have to get home and sprint over to Orange County. Ugh. It's going to be yep. hard. I bet. This is so messed up they did that. <laughs> Man. But like you said, they did it on purpose. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so there are discounted tickets. So, I mean, you know. But anyway, so. And the Lakers, well, speaking of the. Well, we can just talk about the Ducks. I mean, immediately, you know. But. Uh, oh, 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 oh. Of course, the news broke. Kershaw. Is staying a Dodger. Mm-hmm. I'm so happy about that. For at least one year. I think this is it for him. I think so, too. I think they're going to, you know. But if they don't win a World Series, it, to me, it really is World Series or bust. Mm-hmm. You don't get Yamamoto, Shohei Otani, and freaking Kershaw and have Mookie Betts and, and, and all these amazing athletes and lose. If they lose, it, it's it's a crying shame. So, anyway. Um, the All-Star break, of course, we are back from that. In the NHL. So, the Ducks came back. So, well, let me just go ahead and put this out there. So, the Ducks uh, actually did win right before my birthday, the day before. And they beat the Sharks. We talked about this a couple weeks ago. 3-2 to two in overtime. Took the All-Star break. And the Ducks came back on Friday the 9th. And they lost. <laughs> to the Oilers, 5-3. to three. I mean, it's just... It, I really hope when they play the Devils, they please get a win. <laughs> please get, gosh damn it, please get a win. They look like crap. This team looks so horrible. <laughs> They're playing on Tuesday in uh, Canada, okay, versus Montreal, playing the Canadians. So hopefully, but yeah, right now the Ducks are currently, <laughs> gosh, eighteen and thirty-one, and okay. second, second to last in the Pacific. <laughs> The leader in the Pacific has 74 points. Anaheim has 38. That's Anaheim for you. <laughs> so anyway, so hopefully they're not falling apart. The seams coming up. But anyway, Lakers, it's just been a crying shame for them too. Uh, I'm, I'm very, well actually it hasn't really been. It's actually pretty good. I, I'm just irritated because the Nuggets lost, but they're a much better team. I'm glad we stuck with them. But since my birthday, man, the Lakers beat the Celtics. Of course, talked about that a couple weeks ago or last week. Beating the Celtics 114 to 105 on my birthday in the Garden in Boston. Oh, what a good day. Then we go on to beat the Knicks on that Saturday. And we went out to Ho Dads. <gasps> we got to talk about Ho Dads. Oh, yeah, that's oh, right. Oh, man, that was good in Ocean Beach. Mm-hmm. Um, so, Lakers defeated the Knicks 113 to 105 on the road. Then they come home and, well, actually, then they're on the road. They stayed out there and beat the Hornets 124 to 118. Come home, lose to the Nuggets this last pass Thursday, 114 to 106. But I'll tell you right now, the Lakers are horrible. Well, it's not horrible, but they're not that good. And to compete with the Nuggets, who just came off of a freaking championship, to only lose by that much, eight point loss. I mean, yeah, I guess I'm just trying to find victories here, but <laughs> I mean, it was a decent, you know. And then beating the Pelicans last night, or actually, no, two nights ago on Friday night, uh, beating the Pelicans 1 1- 39 to 122. Not bad. Not bad. So, next game, of course, at home versus the Pistons. The Pistons are 8 and 44 on the season. Mm-hmm. I repeat, the Pistons have won 8 games and lost 44 this season. 
If the Lakers lose this freaking game, I'm, yeah. Okay. Lakers are currently 28 and 26, two games above 500, and uh, currently in the division. Well, if you look at the conference, number nine team right now, we'd be in the play in tournament. The playoffs start tomorrow. But number nine team, not great at all. And then in the division, of course, in the Pacific. We are second to last. <laughs> yeah, the Clippers are actually leading it, and it's making me sick. But they're 35-16, and 16, and there you have it. So, anyway, I'm excited. We got CBU baseball and softball starting. Mm -hmm. We just started. We got our soccer teams, of course, coming out the San Diego Wave. Um, really, 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 really excited, you know, for, for that coming out. The Galaxy, going to check out some of those games. I mean, got lots of cool stuff coming our way this year so, with our sports. So, Patty Bax, good afternoon. Hope you're feeling better today. Oh, says so she was feeling better yesterday, but worse again. We will feel better too, uh, Patty. Yeah, get better. It's just going around, unfortunately. Uh, it is. It sucks, but anyway. So, okay. So, with that said, you guys, one more break. When we come back, we are going to jump on into Super Bowl commercials and talk a little bit about Super Bowl 58 coming up in just over. Well, I guess about two hours. <laughs> You're listening to Sports Club Perspectives right here on IE Sports Radio. You're the referee for all. That is sports. We'll be right back after this. Hello, ladies and sinners. Hello, sports fans around the world. Hello, IE Sports family. This is Cale Henderson, the host of IE Vegas, the Sin City Sports Show, presented by IE Sports Radio. If you folks are interested in sports in the Vegas area, if you're wanting to have a blast for one hour every Tuesday night from 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, this is a show built for the Vegas sports fans where we feature the Las Vegas Raiders, the Las Vegas Golden Knights, the Las Vegas Aces, and the University of Las Vegas, Nevada, Rebels. Hopefully, fingers crossed, MLB team coming soon. Either way, if you folks are looking to have a blast for one hour each and every week, tune, tune in Tuesday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you folks are interested in Vegas sports news, go to our Twitter, at SinCities underscore IESR, and you can speak with me, the host, Kale Henderson, at Kale underscore Henderson on Twitter. At any time, be happy to reply always want to reach out to our fans again the sin city sports show presented by ie sports radio your direct feed for all that is sports sports fans do you like teams that are tough cities that are tougher and fan bases that are passionate about their teams? How about teams that are historic and stadiums that are iconic? Then you belong in Chicago, and you need to check out Shy town Weekly. Join me, Adam Kernan, every week as we keep up with all things Chicago sports. Bears, Bulls, Blackhawks, Cubs, White Sox. We'll cover them all, plus more. The Windy City is always buzzing, and we'll keep you up on all the big games and major stories. So tune in to Chi Town Weekly every week right here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. And we are back. Welcome back to the Sports Club Perspective, right here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're pulling in here on the ending of the show. Thank you so much for tuning in today. It's been a fun one, but we are not done just yet. We've got to talk about today's game, and of course, we've got to get on into... Uh, well, we got to order our pizzas pretty soon. So you want some Papa John's today? Mm-hmm. Papa John's? Why do you like Papa John's so much? I don't know. It's just so good. Isn't it good? And I like their <laughs> garlic sauce. It's so good! And the pepperoni. Oh, this sucks. What? Because now you like pepperonis. Not with my pizza. Oh, I don't want say, my pizza spicy. I was going to say no. She's you can have them. Mm -mm. <laughs> well, 
We'll be ordering our pizza soon. And yeah, we're really excited for all that good stuff coming up in a few moments. Um, but yeah, we're uh, ready to roll, y'all. This has been a, been a fun show. So we're talking about Super Bowl commercials. Okay, so first things first, let's get the game out of the way, right? We mm -hmm. have the, the uh, San Francisco 49ers taking on the Kansas City Chiefs, of course, uh, the Niners, 12 and 5 on the season. Chiefs, 11 and 6. The Niners are actually favored by a point and a half in this game. They're the favorite, like just a little bit. Should be a good game. But there is one little thing I gotta say about this game. I, I mean, of course, I can't stand either team. Whatever. Boo, both teams. But eh, cool. You know, somebody's gonna win, someone's gonna lose. Cool. But. Man, I just... I want people to stop hating. <laughs> I feel so bad for homegirl. Kelsey's lady. I feel so freaking bad. Because I feel like everyone's bashing her right now. Because mm -hmm. she's so, like, popular. Um, she's, like, a, you know, big time, like, all over the place. With the Super Bowl, or, or with this, the Chiefs in general. But I just feel really bad, because... Like, it's really not her fault. Like, home just goes to the games to support. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the Chiefs are just a good team. Is what it is, right? But I just feel so bad because, man, she gets a lot of hate now. Like, I can't go on X without somebody talking some kind of crap. And I feel bad. It's like, don't hate her. Hate the Chiefs. I hate the Chiefs. I'll hate the Chiefs with you. <laughs> I'm fine with that. I hate them. I hate the Niners the same exact way. Somehow, somewhere, I hope they both lose this game. I can't stand either one of them. The side of their jerseys make me want to vomit. I can't stand either of these disgusting teams. Sorry. And yet, you're going to still watch it. Just a Raider fan here. But yeah, um, however, I just think it's really messed up, though, that people are hating on her. It's kind of just kind of jacked up. Mm -hmm. What's her name? Look it up. No, can't look it What's up. What's her name? It starts with a T. Gosh darn it. Taylor. Taylor. I forgot. Her name's Taylor. Yes. Taylor what? Stop it. <laughs> this isn't fun. It is fun. This is not fun. Look at it up. No. I'm it sorry. starts with an S. I'm not a pop person. You are. <laughs> so, nothing wrong with that. Even though it is fun talking pop culture here. So. Mm -hmm. Swift! Yes. Swift! Jeez. Swift! That's her name. I'm sorry! Forgive me! Yes, Taylor Swift. Not a pop culture person here. Forgive me, but... Yeah, I feel really bad, though. Poor thing. I, I really do feel for, for all the hate that she gets, and it's kind of messed up, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, we've had, oh my gosh, let's not get started on the freaking soap operas we've had in the last year, a couple of years with the, with the Chiefs, and I don't think I need to mention any names or any people or siblings or anything, but, you know, they've, they've had their own soap opera. Uh, you know, they don't need another one. <laughs> I guess, yeah, so anyway, yeah, I guess, I guess, yeah, kind of feel bad, and be kind of nice if everybody stopped hating on her. Poor thing. Yeah. You know. But hate the Chiefs all you want to, please. Please. I'm Shoot. And if I was not complaining, and nobody else should complain, because mm, yeah. she's made them money, definitely, for sure, so. Yeah. yeah, so, anyway, but the game itself, look, I, I already made my pick. I think the Chiefs are going to win. They're a good, strong football team. They have, what? Well, Fine, I'm going for the other one, 49ers. The 49ers. I mean, like I said. You can't either, keep changing your mind. Either one. No, because uh, this is the weird one. My brain is saying the Chiefs. Mm -hmm. and my heart wants to go with the Niners because the Chiefs are just the better team. I really feel that. But it'd be kind of nice to see the Chiefs lose because it's funny seeing them lose. But at the same exact time, I don't want to see the Niners win because I can't stand them. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is a hard game for me. It's a hard one. I, I'm going to watch it. I watched it four years ago. Mm -hmm. And the only highlight was seeing Shakira and J-Lo perform at halftime. Only Shakira. Mm -hmm. yeah, Slays J-Lo fan. I still like her. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I'm just not a big fan of her. I don't know why. Um, I'm not a big fan of either of these teams. I watched them four years ago. I'll watch them again. But anyway. Uh, my pick, the Bills... You know, Patty's in the chat room. I, I still believe in them. I still think they'll make it next year. 
Mm-hmm. Like just you know, uh, as Raider fans, we know that they're not going to be there for. Anyway, the Bills. Let's hope the Bills win. <laughs> let's hope the Bills get there next year and make it happen. We'll see. But anyway, um, yeah, Raiders are on the up and up, but we, we still need. I think this year is going to be the Raiders' year. I... You're a bold woman. I think they'll make the playoffs. The Raiders make the playoffs. Mm-hmm. I don't know about any further than even the wild card, but you gotta have faith in your team, man. They're not that good. So <laughs> they need surgery. They need to dissect the team. Yeah, but they have though with getting a good coach. We have one linebacker that's worth a crap. One, one defensive end that's actually decent. Okay, everybody else just ridiculous. Hey, Jelly. I guess the big man, not Jelly. Um, I forgot big man in the middle, but. I don't know. Secondary, mm, I don't know. I, I kind of, I don't know. I kind of, I love, uh, J- Jimmy G's got to go because we found our quarterback. Okay, we found our guy right now. And I am so proud. I'm happy with him, actually. I really think, I think right now, because I want to look right now, um, even if we have, like, odds in our favor, eh, that's kind of, that's kind of um, going a little too but anyway, but Aiden O'Connell, I like that guy a lot. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Devontae Adams, if he's even going to stay. I, there's just a lot of question marks. So hopefully this team gets better. But yeah, the Bills were so close, Patty says. And yeah, they're still going to be my pick next year. This team is, they're so damn resilient. And I just want to see these guys win it. I mean, they they lost four times in a row in the 90s. That's got to be painful to get there four times and lose four times. <laughs> Kind of want to see them win one, you know. Mm-hmm. I feel bad for them. You know, the Raiders do it to them damn selves. So they kind of want to pull their head out of their rectum. They can, but anyway, I'm sorry. You know me and the Raiders, <laughs> but anyway. So um, with that said, we're all done with that. You're taking the Niners. Are you really taking that ugly team? Yes, because I like to go opposite of you. I don't know why she does that. Because it's funny. It's funny. Super Bowl commercials, you guys. Our last topic for the night, or for the day, uh, courtesy of usatoday.com. This article is written on, actually, today. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Um, the t- a topic here is, how much does a Super Bowl commercial cost in 2024? 32nd ad prices through history. USA Sports, or USA Today Sports. Uh, and this, of course, published today on February 11, 2020. 24 and it's just crazy look at all these prices so this is insane oh is that too bright for you yes okay sorry okay so going all the way back to super bowl we saw a video earlier watch mojo we shot watch mojo countdown and all that good stuff uh, that's really crazy patty was actually there for all those games oh that's awesome in the 90s we were two three four and five for those games <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy to think of. But, um, yeah, that, that's awesome, Patty. Well, once again, we, we want to see them win. At least I want to see them win. Mm-hmm. see them win? Mm-hmm. Yay, Bills. Okay, so the cost of a commercial, 30-second spot in Super Bowl One in 1967 when the Chiefs played the Packers was $37,500. $37,500 for a commercial. That's just crazy. Can you imagine that? Mm-mm. 30 seconds. That that amount of money bought you 30 seconds. That's insane. Patty says, that's when tickets were like 150 each. I'm like, mm. gosh, can you imagine that now? Now I don't even want to know what the we... <laughs> but um, anyway, so it's kind of crazy how it goes up the very next year, 54,000, 54,500. And it just kind of goes up. But here's the crazy part. Not even 10 years. 10 years goes by. Okay? Super Bowl ten in 77. That's when the Raiders won. Can you believe this? They went from, in 1967, three uh, 37500 for a 30-second time slot. And in 1977, it went up to 125000 within 10 years. That's just crazy. <laughs> by the 80s... By the 80s, we were already in the 200,000s, with 1980 being 222,000. By the 90s, we were already over 700,000. So all four of those years for the Bills, 90, 91, 92, 93, the four, the four spots were 700,000, 400, 800,000, 800, 
850, um, sorry, 850,000. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, the same thing for the very next year, 850,000. That's insane. By the time we got to the 2000s, well, actually, we started getting into the mills now. By 1995, which is kind of crazy, because that was the last time that the 49ers won the Super Bowl, and they beat the Chargers, beat the crap out of them in that Super Bowl in 1995, but look at this, one point, or sorry, 1.15 million was the first time it went into the millions. Mm-hmm. By the year 2000, it was already up to 2.1 million. By 2005, it was already at 2.4 million. By 2010... Two point nine five nine hundred. Is that what is that? Two point nine five four million. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> I don't know how to say that. <laughs> but okay, and then we get to two thousand fifteen. Four point two twenty five million, and here we go again, all the way to just last year. We have now eclipsed seven million in this year. That was last year in two thousand twenty three, and this year is expected, of course, or I guess it is seven million dollars. Oh my gosh. People are crazy to spend that. Just for a commercial. Thirty seconds. That you only see during the Super Bowl, because I feel like all the other commercials you don't really see them too often. <laughs> they have to be a really popular commercial to see them continuously even after the Super Bowl. It's that blows my mind. That's dumb. That blows my mind. I don't understand that. Like, how... I would how... never spend that much. I'd be like, uh, I could get my commercials cheaper <laughs> and have them circulate quite often like they usually do. Oh, uh, that's just crazy. Uh, Patty Bax here says, The chatter of the NFL has gotten too fond of itself and has gotten away from whom, uh, whom got them there. Yeah, it's the average fan like me so many others who sacrifice each week just to pay for a ticket now people go to the game and don't even know what football is and it's the truth it's the truth that's about the ticket prices i mean crazy right it's Mm -hmm. it's insane but anyway oh she said she lost sound well we're still here that's not good well hopefully she can still hear us um but yeah i'll tell you right now we just you know i mean 100 percent just just uh Mind blown <laughs> at what these costs are. So yeah, seven million dollars for a thirty second spot now. That's just crazy. I mean, is it? Is that something that? Do you feel that's worth it? No. Nope. Because you know everyone's watching. The world's watching. Well, not the world. At least the not U.S. Everyone's is watching. Everyone's watching. A lot of people are watching around the world, but not the whole world, like the World Cup. But these commercials. This is it. During the game. What can they make? Seven million dollars. You already know when you're marketing, you're expecting to make double, even. Mm-hmm. Of course, I wouldn't want to say these are pennies to these companies because they're not. But I will say that you know, I mean, it's not as we look at it. Seven million. Oh my gosh! I mean, to them, it's like oh, it's kind of a hit. But whatever, we'll spend it. Uh, I, I still think like that's insane. I mean. Do you really think that these com- that, realistically? Do you think that any of these companies make back that seven million because of that commercial solely, or do you think they might even, you know, of course, break even or even make more? I mean, they make tons of money all the time anyway. But do you really feel that seven million dollars right now is actually worth making a commercial to put on the spot? No, because I don't like spending money. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think it's just a really it's a coin toss. Like you, I guess you have to be willing to take that chance and spend that much and see and hope and pray probably that your business will succeed from this commercial Mm. that you produced. It's true. I mean, let's be real. Pepsi and Coke, they're, they're billions. Okay. Billions. And they're just going to, they probably make that in a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, they're, they're good, but I just... It blows my mind, though, how some of these companies, you know, can spend that much money on just all those advertisement and marketing when they already have their loyal, faithful customers. Of course, the, that marketing keeps them coming back. Or, no, sorry, it, it, it brings new people aboard. But it's just insane, though. I mean, the thing. Uh, I mean, the history of these commercials being so expensive is just, it's... Well, I think they're only this expensive because of the Super Bowl, though. Well, of course. 
I mean, I'm pretty sure they still are expensive, but probably not as much <clears throat> yeah. as that. <laughs> so, when we were all hitting the, the Watch Mojo countdown, you see anyone that you particularly liked or that you remembered? Um, I remember the Frogs one, <laughs> which was Budweiser. Yeah, I love that. My siblings and I would always <laughs> take turns. We would go Bud, and then the other person would say Wise, and then Zer, obviously, because <laughs> it was just fun. But um, the Pepsi with Britney Spears, I kind of remember that one. Oh, yeah. And then there was one more, but now I'm forgetting it, of course. <laughs> the Pepsi one for Jimi Hendrix was awesome with the accordion. With the accordion, you got the guitar, you hearing Purple Hands, and the accordion was great. But my favorite one is the Terry Tay office linebacker. Mm. He's knocking the crap out of everybody. Yeah. Hey, you took your 10 minute break and 10 minutes ago. Oh, bah! <laughs> like, I just loved that. It was fun to it. But you know what? It's, it's really cool to see all of these companies, uh, you know, make really fun, creative commercials. But, ah, oh, just looking at that hit from the wallet, like I said, I get it. They make tons and tons and tons of money. Oh, Betty White. Today. The Snickers oh, one. White. I loved that one. That Betty. one's my all time favorite one, to be oh. honest. Because. Who doesn't love Betty White? She was so funny. Rest in peace, Betty White. Yeah. She was wonderful. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the Snickers commercial. She, she took a hit. And of course, that wasn't her. But, you know. Yeah. But, you know, it's the You go, pop. <laughs> she is it, you know. And, oh, that was funny. Um, yeah, that was. There, there's been some great commercials in the mm-hmm. past. And, well, what are you looking forward to today? Do you think we're going to see some funny ones? Or do they're going to be kind of lame? I don't remember any from last year, honestly. I don't remember any from... I feel like they've gotten <laughs> downhill. Like, no one has no sense of humor anymore. I don't know. Yeah. Um, hopefully, they'll be good. We can only hope. But we do know that uh, we are definitely looking forward to the game we're excited for it, and we'll definitely be back on Friday. But we got a pizza to order, or a couple pizzas to order. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because have... you eat a lot. Sorry. <laughs> growing boy, growing boy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Yeah, Patty throws in here. Any of the ads with the Clydesdales in them are wonderful. Yeah, the Clydesdales are beautiful. Oh, uh-huh. Yeah, they have big shaggy hooves. They're, they're, they're so cute. <laughs> Clydesdales are awesome. And they're massive horses. Huge horses. So, yeah, those are cool but watching commercials. But anyway, guys, it has been fun. Uh, so much fun hanging out with you guys today. Super Bowl Sunday. Here we go, guys. This is it. Niners, Chiefs, Taylor Swift. Because you know the camera's going to be on her mm-hmm. a lot. And once again, nobody should hate her for that. Hate the NFL for just trying to profit off of Everybody really just wants someone to hate. Hate the Chiefs and the Niners. Mm hmm. Hate them both, because I hate do. the sport. I'm just kidding. You can join me. Hey, hey, hey. You can't hate football. <laughs> but the Chiefs and the that is Larry B. Approven to hate. Yes. Yes. You can sit next to me on the hate wagon for both those teams. <laughs> but I hate them both. Sorry. Anyway. That was fun. She's a trooper. She's a trooper. Look. Look. Patty earlier this week, poor thing, she's been sick, she didn't want to miss two weeks in a row, she went on, poor thing, she was just, just getting through it, but she thought it was a great show, and um, thank you for doing that, Patty, it was still a wonderful show, you know, you're hopefully feeling better now, but I will tell you, still good, jumping up today doing this, not feeling the best, of course, lots better than she has been, mm-hmm. but you my dear, I deserve the applause. And the yeehaw. <laughs> you guys gonna not get a yeehaw in there. <laughs> you rock. You earned it. <laughs> you, uh, you split it up with it today, and that was awesome. Mm-hmm. That was awesome. She fought. She fought through it, guys. Did the show. So, the Puppy Bowl! <gasps> I forgot about the Puppy Bowl. <laughs> we gotta watch the Bowl coming up. Mm-hmm. Before the game. Mm-hmm. It'll be awesome, though. Looking forward to that. You better not have a kitty ball. Oh, I know, right? blue in there. <laughs> she beat up everybody. Oh, no, yeah, our little cat's too violent. Mm-hmm. You probably have to play with the puppies. This <laughs> 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 is my lion bowl. But anyway, any last comments or anything for our listeners today? Thank you for listening. Take care, be safe, and stay healthy. <laughs> Please do. Because... You know, it's a sick world out there. Just kidding. Literally. I feel like everyone's getting sick right now. Cold. But anyway. 
We hope you're all having a wonderful day. Hope you enjoyed the game. Have fun. Drive safely. Drink responsibly. Please don't drink and drive. As Mike Pat always says, a Uber is always going to be much less expensive than a DUI. So enjoy, you guys. Have a great rest of your day. And we will see y'all coming up soon. It was fun. For my beautiful wife, the lovely Cecilia, from your boy Larry B. That will do it for this week. Go grab me some Planet Jerky at planetjerky.net. Check out iceportradio.com. Show us some love there. And well, we'll see y'all next week. Until then, take care. And as always, God bless. <laughs>